Well, I had the pleasure of meeting Jerry when uh, I had my own theater. And Jerry played in several shows for me, uh, but I was not in the production. And then finally, I think the first one that we did was High Button Shoes, when we played husband and wife. And we had a marvelous time, and I can tell you that he was just as delightful on the stage as he was off the stage. And then we did uh, Can Can together, and I loved that. I found that Jerry could scene steal with the very best, and he did. But I loved him in Can Can, particularly, he was just terrific. I first met Jerry about 10 years ago, um, and I was brand new to the South Florida theater community, and I was an absolute neophyte. I was completely uh, a babe in the woods, and there were a handful of people who were so gracious and lovely and just so easy to get to know and easy to talk to, and Jerry was at the very top of that list. Not only was he one of the top stars of the South Florida region, but he was also the ultimate gentleman. He was so sweet and so kind and so gracious about everything he did, about how he dealt with anyone, from someone he had just met to his dearest friends. Uh, over the course of the next 10 years, I had the great pleasure of not only knowing him as a personal friend, but also getting to see on stage. His, um, his Don Quixote is the best I know I've ever seen in my life. Not only did he have the passion and the heartbreak and the pathos of the character demands, but he also had this grace that he just carried throughout the entire performance. That same grace um, was seen again in um, his performance in Lacage, uh, which I fell in love with him all over again. I first met Jerry uh, during a production of My Favorite Year back in 2001, and I was fortunate enough to play his daughter. And did you work with him after that? I did not. No, we never worked together again after that, but we um, saw each other quite a bit and maintained a friendship and a wonderful friendship, actually. we I continued to see him in shows, and um, he continued to see me in shows and um, continued to see each other just, you know, at theater functions and out with people and, and with friends and such, and it was just a, a beautiful relationship that really moved forward from just that one experience of being on stage together. Do you have anything that does not involve uh, being on stage that you remember about Jerry? Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember all of the fun that we used to have just at social gatherings. You know, it was, it was so much fun to hang out with Jerry just in a, you know, at a party or hanging out at dinner or, you know, just anything that, that didn't involve being in the theater because his energy was just infectious, his smile, his laugh. I mean, there wasn't anything about him that didn't make you smile. And that's the one thing I, I'll always remember about Jerry, you know, the way he could walk into a room and no matter what kind of day I had, if it could have been the worst day, and Jerry Gulledge could walk into a room and light it up and immediately make me feel like everything was okay. And... I always loved the fact that when we would see each other, no matter where it was, he would give me just the biggest hug, as Jerry always did, because he always just hugged you with so much warmth and so much love, and would always just still call me his daughter, you know, it just after that one experience, all it took was one, and he always, in that respect, did just kind of feel like another dad to me. All right, this is impromptu, I just got grabbed. But I'll do anything for Jerry. Um, the first show I did with Jerry was Take Me Along, and it was a musical, and I played his wife, and there's a beautiful love song ballad that the husband and wife sing to each other in Take Me Along, and not being a singer, I would, I think I pattered like the first intro lines, and then I got to just stand there on the porch and gaze into Jerry's eyes and hear that amazing voice as he sang this beautiful it's hard to know where to begin. Um, I have known Jerry for years and we have worked on stage and off stage together and off stage we gardened and we shared gardening secrets and um, composting elements, <laughs> um, worms, 
um, what to do with our varying uh, floral material that wouldn't grow in our particular sand. Um, so we spent a lot of time with that. We also talked about um, cooking. We used to do something called a sit and sip when there was an apartment upstairs at Actors Playhouse um, where we worked regularly together both as husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend or in some capacity opposite each other. And um, in the sit and sips, everyone would come on a Friday night after the show and bring little snacks. And they started out as things like chips and dip and that sort of thing, and we'd have a special cocktail designed to the show uh, for our first venture out. And then Jerry started bringing dipped strawberries and exotic fruits and odd plates of abundant um, varieties of things, and it became a contest. And uh, what started out as little snacks ultimately became this entirely brilliant buffet at the table every Friday night for sit and sip. So that was fun. Um, I will never forget his, um, he would always, he would always have a different attractive pair of drawers that he would show us regularly in the dressing room. Um, he would always have to race straight home so that he could have his tombstone pizza. Um, let's see, what else? We had a great time. We cavorted a lot. We did uh, a number of productions yeah. together over the course of the years and um, we were pretty good. Well the first thing he did and I think it was the first show he may have done in this area was The Boyfriend. So I have known Jerry for a long long time but when we did She Loves Me I needed somebody to play a waiter who could sing, dance and be very funny. There was only one choice. It was Jerry Gulledge. Remember? Well, I do remember, but it wasn't just sing and dance and be a waiter. He had to be fabulous. And there was no one else who could be fabulous the way Jerry could. And he made all the difference in the world, and the audience went mad. It's, it's always one of our favorite moments when Jerry was in this incredible thing that uh, Babs, uh, Barbara Flatten, choreographed. Huge number with the whole cast and he stole the number. He was great. But what was wonderful is when he stole the number, it wasn't that he took it away from everyone else, he included everyone else. He just happened to be divine. Right, he was super. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Hi, my name's Kevin Dean, and Jerry and I did Worth the Grease Paint together, and I was having trouble hitting the low notes, and he said, you have to smoke a cigarette before curtain, and you have to smoke a cigarette at intermission, and you'll get to know low notes. And I had quit smoking. Uh, but he was right, because those two cigarettes and I got me uh, to do Anthony Newley's Low Notes. So thank you, Jerry, and uh, we all miss you. My name is Margot Moreland. Um, I have some very distinct memories of Jerry. I came equipped with my flamingo earrings and my pink in honor of him and to celebrate him. I was lucky enough to be his Mary Todd to his Abe Lincoln. Uh, in Lincoln Tunnel, the reading and also the recordings <laughs> through the years. Um, it was a joy to work with him, complete and honest. He was a friend, he was a confidant. But one of my favorite memories of Jerry is when he first had his grandson. <laughs> and I remember him telling me, showing me the picture and telling me, I'm not Grandpa, I'm g -pa, and Arthur is Papa Fur, and I put my phone down there, but I still have Jerry and Arthur's number in my phone as g -pa and Papa Fur. It was Man of La Mancha at Actress Playhouse at the Miracle Theater, I think it was, I think it was 1995, it was the opening of the Miracle Theater. Yeah, and you know, I mean, aside from Jerry's immense talent, he's just he was just one of those guys. A friend of mine was asking me, you know, where are you going tonight? This Jerry Gulledge Memorial will tell me about Jerry. And I said, I don't have any words to describe it because it's not just that he was this terrific entertainer. He was this fantastic singer. He was this great actor. He was just one of those spirits. He was just one of those guys that you just wanted to be around all the time. Turn out go to write 
the unrightable wrong. To love, pure and chaste from afar. To try when your arms are too weary. To reach the unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far. For the right, without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest, that my heart will lie peaceful and calm. That one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star.